Hi, I'm Mason Marangella here at Sweetwater today with my friend Tim Marco, who's going to be our guitar player and demonstrator. And we're going to be showing you how to get John Mayer tone in explicitly looking at the different evolutions of his tone since the beginning on his early albums until now, in different types of gear that he used, in some of the gear that you can get right here at Sweetwater at a couple of different price points to really nail that tone and maybe incorporate a few of these pedals into your rig if that's something that you want to go after. Now before we get started, let's talk about the gear. So what we have here on the floor that we're gonna be demonstrating with, and these are just some of many possible pedals that could work for this type of tone. We have a Tube Screamer Mini. We have a J Rocket Archer. We have a Vertex Steel String Supreme SRV Edition. We have a Boss Chorus CE2W a Supro Delay, and then we're gonna be doing a little bit of looping to demonstrate some of these tones using a TC Ditto Plus Looper. The guitar is a PRS Silver Sky, and we're running that all into a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, all on the clean channel. So Tim, you and I are both huge fans of John Mayer, his playing, his tone. If we're thinking about sort of kind of overarching food groups of pedals, kind of thinking broadly, what do you kind of think of when you associate kind of his lead tone as it's morphed over time? What are some of the constants that we see in that rig, you think? I would say that pretty consistently his clean tone is not all the way clean, so mm -hmm. it's not um, like a real dry, basic clean tone. It always has like a little bit of like the amp on the edge of breakup kind yep. of a thing. Yep. So that adds a sustain and a little bit of grit. And um, so even if he's, it sounds like it's a clean tone on like a song like Wild Blue or, you know, something in that style, um, it's still pretty fat and it's mm -hmm. not just like a bone dry uh, amp. It, it sounds like it's a, it's pushed a little bit more. So yeah, I, I think, agree I think the steel string SRV would uh, be able to replicate that. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's probably why why we decided to include this is just you, you need a little bit of that compression and sometimes yeah. what uh, just a tiny bit of overdrive will impart. It doesn't necessarily sound like overdrive in the context of the mix. It just sounds like there's more harmonic content and detail and it's just kind of helping elevate some of those other frequencies. So definitely mm -hmm. that's a great pedal for that. And of course, you could use something like a J Rocket Lenny, which is a similar style pedal, which is also really great at doing this sort of tone. The other thing I was thinking about that's really been pretty consistent throughout John Mayer's history with pedals is he always has a slapback analog delay, and of course his analog delay of choice is the Aquapus Mark I, but those have gotten crazy in terms of their price point. I think that most of them are well over $1,000, but I really love this Supro because it has the same exact style of chip, the MN3005, the classic Bucket Brigade, and really has a little bit of that darkness that we would associate with the Aquapus, which is basically George Tripps's interpretation of a Boss DM2 that famously used that MN3005 chip. So we're gonna be using that today, but this could very well be a DM2 from Boss. This could be a carbon copy from MXR. There's a lot of different things that could fall into this category but we're going to be using that. And then kind of recently, uh, what do you feel like are some of the new additions that he's been using to his rig that we can kind of hear in some of his lead tones, like on Last Train Home, for example? Um, yeah, so on Last Train Home, it does sound like maybe one of the most distorted tones that he's used. Yep. Uh, like the most gain I've probably heard. And there's also chorus on it, which is a new thing. So I think when we were just playing around before we started, we were using a couple of these stacked and then also a chorus, but we'll get into that, but. Yeah, yeah I think the chorus is, is so important. We'll talk about sort of the, the things that led up to this, the foundation of it, but 
you know, Eric Clapton is a huge influence on John Mayer, and I think we started to hear him get into that sort of tone uh, in the last album on songs like Helpless, and maybe we'll get a chance to play kind of something along those lines, and where we started to hear chorus introduced, and I actually watched a live stream that, uh, that John Mayer did with, uh, with another Instagram channel where he actually mentioned that he pretty much used the chorus, a CE2, very similar to what we have here, and pretty much just set the knobs straight up at noon on both knobs, and that was kind of just the core element sound. And if you listen to a lot of that Eric Clapton stuff from the 80s, whether it's the work that he did on the Lethal Weapon soundtrack, a lot of people don't know that David Sanborn and Eric Clapton scored almost all of the Lethal Weapon series, in particular the first one, and that had a lot of that chorus tone, and also Behind the Sun and Journeyman used a lot of chorus tones on it as well, and I think John Mayer's kind of paying a little homage to Eric Clapton in some of those tones, especially on Last Train Home, and using that Soldano uh, as part of that tone too, which Eric Clapton very famously used in the, in the 80s. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun going into this, but let's start kind of first with early uh, John Mayer electric tones. Now, I know that he came out with a couple of albums before the trio, but I think that the John Mayer trio is a good starting place because... That's where we really see him having a little bit more freedom as a guitar player. He's kind of stepping away from the more acoustic-oriented albums, and you're really getting to hear him be able to experiment a little bit more with pedals, electric guitar, and uh, having Pino Palladino and, and Steve Jordan, of course, is just like a whole new thing for him. And I think one of the songs I think of as a good example of like good balance between rhythm, tone with some gain to it, and then lead tone is who do you think I was? And I'm wondering if maybe we could run through that a little bit. You could show us maybe with some of the pedals we have here, how we could build that tone up. And maybe we could uh, try that a little bit with the uh, Silver Sky Fender and some of these uh, pedals here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All right. definitely. All right, I'm gonna turn on the steel string just cause uh, that's a nice platform for overdrive. And I'm just gonna kind of play around like maybe switch on the Archer, but here's the, just the steel string. compared to clean. All right, let's try the Archer. Uh, that sounds pretty close. Let's try the Tube Screamer. To me, that sounds like he is probably putting the Tube Screamer on when he's going to go soloing right. off of that song. Um, so. Maybe a little bit more gain. Is this the gain? Yep. Yeah. So um, the Archer was sounding great, uh, especially I think neck pickup is a big part of that sound. And then yeah. Devil, definitely together, for the lead tone, I think it's definitely the the fit. Like it sounds like rhythm tone going archer and steel string, and we're just using the steel string channel of the SRV mm -hmm. steel string supreme. And then when you want to go to that lead, so can you give us an example where like maybe we start with the yeah. kind of the rhythm tone, and then you switch to the lead tone with the tube screamer? Yeah. That was so in the zone 
of exactly what that tone is. And mm -hmm. I love the archer setting that you dialed in there. It just was so beefy and fat. Yeah, I love that. Had the steel string kind of add that platform, you know, because John Mayer at that time was using kind of a combination of two rocks, some fenders, even some marshals in some of that stuff. And then just it. adding in that tube screen, which has pretty much been a mainstay his entire career on his rig. This was actually, I think, really, really close. Now, if you didn't want to use this exact same combination of pedals, alternatives to the Tube Screamer that are right here at Sweetwater, something like a full tone full drive could be a great upgrade if you wanted to go something a little bit more boutique. You could also go with something simple like a TS9, but the Tube Screamer Mini is a great value, really small, fits on really any pedal board. You could go with the Archer, of course, for that Klon style sound. You could also go with something a little bit more budget like an EHX Soul Food would be a great alternative to this and really, really affordable to get that Klon sound. And again, with the Steel String SRV, the J Rocket Lenny is a really great pedal to do that. It has very much a similar sort of vibe in trying to going after that kind of Stevie Ray Vaughan amp tone. So those would be some alternatives to these if you didn't want to get exactly what's on this board, but still wanted to get in the zone of that type of tone. So that was really cool. That was kind of earlier John Mayer, again, looking at kind of the trio record with Steve Jordan, Pino Palladino, and when we really started to see John Mayer get to have some, you know, getting to do some more electric guitar work that he didn't really get to do so much in the earlier pop albums. But I think where we see the next evolution is in Continuum, and one of the songs that I really like that kind of shows a little bit difference of a, of a lead tone is when he plays I Don't Trust Myself with Loving You, and in that solo tone, he goes kind of more clean. And I think this is when the dumbbells start to get introduced into the rig. He starts to use the steel string singer, which is that really big, fat, compressed, um, just really, really harmonically rich overdrive tone, but very light overdrive. It doesn't have a lot of gain, doesn't have a lot of hard edges. It's really nice and smooth, has maybe a little bit of slot back delay. I wanna see if we can kind of build in that tone so we kind of hear a little bit more cleaner example of a John Mayer lead tone, which we started to see a lot more of on that Continuum record. Um, so maybe we can build kind of a little track here and then just experiment to try to dial in maybe that, uh, the Supro maybe for some delay and a little bit of the kind of amp sound, presumably with the Steel String Supreme SRV. Yeah, sounds good. All right, so, let's do it. So let's turn on the Steel String. Uh, definitely gonna need that one for this one. Now you could also use, if we're finding that this is enough compression, you can add in the Supreme side and then it gives you those top three controls to have another output, a fat and a clean control, as well as the toggle switches for bright and deep and rock and jazz. So you can kind of enhance it if we need it, but let's see where we are maybe with just the first channel. Yeah, and that's, you know, compared to clean. That might be a little bit too clean. Let's try the other side of it. Yeah, definitely want the other side of it. Just added a little bit more fatness. To yeah, it. yeah, I think that compression is so quintessential to the steel string singer sound, or even whether it's one of the kind of replicas of a steel string singer, whether it's a two rock or some of the other ones that sort of resembled those type of amps. And were you hearing any slapback on that solo, or do you feel like it was more, mostly just reverb? Uh, I'm hearing a lot of uh, room reverb mm. on that one. So yeah. I don't know if we could try to replicate that or if that's, do you think a delay would get us there. Or? Let's see maybe a little slap back little and then if it's back. inappropriate then we can just stick with spring. Um, let's see. Uh, turn the time down. That's maybe a little bit too dramatic. Um. I don't know. What do you think? Let's hear it without. I think I think without sounds more like yeah. the album to me. So let's let's try that. Let's build the track and let's see what this sounds like. Kind of more of a clean solo tone, a la the Steel String Singer, where John Mayer is kind of going after that really, really just big, fat, wide, clean solo tone. Nice. Thank you. 
Yeah, that sounds great. I think it's amazing, you know, this is a pretty kind of just standard clean tone. I mean, if we're just back to the amp itself. It just doesn't have that harmonic content. I mean, if we go here. Yeah, so like the note is just there. And even though it is still pretty clean sounding, it's definitely way bigger. And um, yeah, you could you can play lead basically. It's hard to play lead with like a real yeah. Dry, clean yeah. sound. Yeah, and I think it goes back to what you said is that it's never just a totally clean sound. And, and certainly we're adding quite a bit of harmonic content here, adding two channels, using the clean control, the fat control, just to add that width, which mm -hmm. is really part of that steel string singer sound, which is so much a part of John Mayer. That was great. Now, again, if you wanted to get this at a better price point, a little bit less expensive, a little smaller unit, you could definitely get the J Rocket Lenny. It sounds absolutely incredible and really goes after those steel string tones, very much like what we're trying to do here. It's a little bit more abbreviated, but you may not need everything that's on here. Maybe your amp can deliver a little bit more of it, or you could supplement with the pedal. Definitely another way to go. All right, so we did John Mayer kind of through a couple of generations. We looked at the trio album. We looked at a little bit of Continuum. But I want to go now and kind of fast forward to the song Helpless, which is on the search for everything. And this is where we first start to see a few new effects being incorporated. We start mm -hmm. to see the use of some chorus on the lead tone. We start to see a little bit more processing. And I think that this is where we really see that kind of uh, co combining some of the traits of Stevie Ray Vaughan and now Eric Clapton in a lot of the lead tone. And again, looking at Eric Clapton in the 80s, Behind the Sun album, Journeyman album, both done in the 80s, the incorporation of using chorus was part of that lead tone. And I think that Helpless is an example of where we first kind of see a lot of that phrasing, some of that kind of modulation on the lead tone, and going with a little bit higher gain stuff as he starts to move into kind of today. Now, not as quite as much gain as what we heard him use on his latest album, but I think he starts to kind of, you kind of see the precursor that's foreshadowing where he's going. So I want to try to dial in some of those tones. We definitely are going to need to use the, the CE2W. Uh, I think that, that Help Us was a little drier, maybe more reverb, not so much delay. And then we'll kind of dial in this stuff. I'm going to let you do your magic here, Tim. Let's, let's see what we got. All right, cool. Yeah, so we're going to put the chorus on. I just, I want to hear this pedal again. Even just that. Uh, those two together sound really great. Mm -hmm. I think we need a little bit more gain. I'll probably put this Tube Screamer on. Yeah, I think um, let's play the loop and I think we're pretty much there. I, de yeah. I definitely think that was there. I mean, yeah, super fun to play that. Oh man, I love what the chorus does. And I mean, as I said earlier, John Mayer kind of says he puts everything at noon. As far as the chorus is concerned, we're slightly different than that. And again, there's 20% tolerance in most pots. So any settings that you see here, there's going to be some amount of, uh, of proximity that you're going to have to infer kind of based on what you're hearing. But I really think just like a little bit of a slow chorus, just a little bit of movement in the background. When you turn on that tube screamer, that mid-range just really helps push everything forward. It sounds very Clapton-y to me, certainly 80s Clapton, which I think is what John was going for when he was doing this. But man, that, that sounded really close. 
And I definitely think if you wanted to do something very similar to this, again, Tube Screamer Mini is an amazing budget pedal, but you could go for a couple of other things. You could go something like the Earthquaker devices. Plumes would be a great substitute for this. If you wanted to go a little bit more high end, you could always go with something like the JHS Bonsai. The Archer, of course, is really a great Klon style, but you could, again, always go for something like the Zeus from TC Electronics. You could also go, as I said before, with the EHX Soul Food. Instead of the steel string, Supreme SRV, you could try something out like the J Rocket Lenny, smaller, more abbreviated, but also a great tone. The CE2 Chorus is kind of unmatched in what it does. I mean, just the fact that they released this, if you find a vintage version of these, these can sometimes be four or $500. So just the price for entry on this Wazacraft is really, really great given what it does and how close it sounds to the original. But you could check out some other analog choruses and maybe get a little close to this. So anything analog, something from MXR might be a good option. They do have an analog chorus. You could also use something like a small clone from Electro Harmonics just to add a little bit of movement to that lead tone as an alternative to the Boss CE2. So now let's go to the latest John Mayer tone or the latest incarnation of it. Of course, it's always evolving and that's on the Sob Rock album. And I think the, the world was taken by storm this summer when the last train home was teased out and then released as the first single from the album. And we really heard again, sort of that evolution of sort of the Eric Clapton inspired tones on that song and how that lead tone kind of evolved from something that we heard like Helpless from what we just played before and how we're adding even more processing, more delays, long reverbs, and really just adding some real bigness to that tone. Now, we also saw him using a Soldano, going the highest gain that we have ever seen him do. But I did notice on a lot of his live performances that he's using a combination of Fender style and also using his Dumble Steel String Singer and then using pedals to kind of make up that gain, presumably Klon style like the Archer and a TS-10 Tube Screamer, which we could certainly emulate with our TS Mini here. So let's try to dial in some of that tone, create some sort of track so we can try to approximate what he's doing there. All right, Tim, what do you got? All right, so we're definitely gonna want the chorus on this one. I'm just gonna go crazy and I'm gonna just turn everything on and see what happens. So I think we're gonna probably use all of Again. Let's see if that works. Let's go for it. Sounding really close. Let's do a little bit more. I think we're, we're pretty much there. All right, let's try it. <laughs> I think we got there. Yeah, that was super fun. I think 
the the well, first of all the plane was incredible what you were going for i think was like just a great interpretation of of kind of melding the john mayer thing the eric clapton thing the tones here were great the movement in the chorus with that delay really not only did the plane nail it but i think the tones really sold it there too oh, for thanks. sure i uh, appreciate it um yeah it's super fun like anytime you can stack two gain pedals you know you're just or actually three gain pedals you know that you can you're just going to be soaring glory and it's going to be super fun. <laughs> yeah, and I think that it, we really tried to stack it in the direction that you would normally see uh, John Mayer's rig. Normally he has his Tube Screamer and John Mayer's TS-10 is first, and then that would go into his Klon, and in this case we're representing that with the Archer, and then of course that would go into his uh, Steel String Singer Amplifier. Now we are using the chorus in Delay After because we kind of have a, a modified version of what he would be doing, but man, even in this configuration, really in the zone tone wise and uh, I think that this could be a great way to sort of interpret some of those tones depending on what generation of John Mayer what era of John Mayer you're into and again just to go over it we started first with the tube screamer that could be a tube screamer that could be a plumes that could be a full tone full drive this could be a JHS bonsai kind of depending on what you wanted to do the archer is fantastic but a lot of other Klon clones could be great here something like the Zeus from TC Electronics or going for something like the EHX Soul Food, another great Klon style pedal. Instead of the Steel String Supreme SRV, you could use something like the J Rocket Lenny, I think is a really nice kind of approximate tone of kind of what we're going for here. So for chorus, you could of course use the CE2W, which is really close to the original CE2, which John Mayer is using, but you could go with a small clone. You could also go with an MXR analog chorus. Really any analog chorus is gonna do really well here. And then for the delay, a great analog delay, whether that's the Aquapus, a DM2 or a Supra delay is really knocking it out of the park using those exact same replica chips, the MN3005, which is of course quintessential part of the original Aquapus, which John Mayer is very famous for using. And then of course, we can't sell you Tim, but Tim has great hands, great fingers, and great tone. And thank you so much, Tim, for being a part of this and for kind of doing a little retrospective on kind of the career so far of John Mayer and some of the gear that's associated with that. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Our, a blast. our pleasure, yeah, this is so fun to do this. And guys, if you're interested in checking out any of these pedals or any of these recommendations, all these pedals are gonna be linked in the description below. And if you wanna know more about how to gather some of these tones for your own rig, of course you can talk to your Sweetwater sales engineer and they can walk you through these combinations and what's really gonna work best for your budget and the tone that you're looking for so you can really express that tone that you hear in your head and get that on your pedal board. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects. Make sure you like, subscribe, and tell us about your favorite lick that uh, Tim was playing here today at the John Mayer style. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.